Hey guys, what's up? Hope everyone's doing good. Thanks for coming back to the channel. So I wanted to go over the uh, Keith Marrow alluvial tone that I posted a couple days ago. Um, so without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, just so you remember what it sounds like. It sounds like this. that one. So let's look at HX edit. Per usual, I have my input gate on. I have the threshold set at negative 70. First block is the distortion block, scream 808. The gain is set to zero. The tone is set to six. The level is set at 10. Pretty typical if you've seen some of my videos. The next block is a noise gate. I find myself putting another noise gate after my distortion block. I just find it tightens it up a little bit more. The next block is an EQ block. And what I'm doing here is shaping the tone that's going into the amp. You can do this before your distortion block. I put it after the distortion and after that second noise gate. So like I said, on this particular track, I used my uh, PRS baritone, the PRS SE277. So I cut some low. The 10 band graphic equalizer, um, at 125, I cut 1 dB, so negative 1 dB. At 250, I cut 1.2 dB. And it looks like at 500, I cut 0.1 dB, so negative 0.1 dB. That's all the difference, folks. I guarantee it. That 0.1 dB. Next in the chain is my amp block. And so, surprise, surprise, I used the Line 6 Badunk. I seem to be going to this amp a lot. Um, it has so much low end, but you can tighten it up a lot. I can't quite explain it. Those of you who are rocking the Helix know play around with this amp um use that depth control you like it also depends on your ir too but whatever without getting into too much of an explanation i'm using the badunk amp block the drive is at five the bass is at 2.2 the mid is at 2.5 the treble is at 8.8 .8. the presence is at 7.3 so I have my channel volume set at 9.6. The master is at 3. The depth is at 2. This is the knob you'll play with to really kind of rein in that low end. The sag is at 3. Bias is at 2.6. And the bias X is at 7.0. The IR block. I'm using an Ohnhammer OH412ENG12C plus V30JS. If you, So if you buy the Angle 412, it's in the folder marked 12C plus V30. And it is then in the Quick Start folder, and it's about halfway down. Um, I typically will start in a Quick Start folder if I have an idea of the cab block I'm going for. And I feel like I've been kind of setting up some tones just with this IR. I just like how it sounds. Um, you can waste so much time trying to find the right IR. Stick to one and, 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 and sculpt your tone and then go from there. You know, see if, you know, get a tone you like and then throw different IRs on it to see how it sounds to see if you can kind of fine tune it. So that's the, the one I'm using. So after the IR, I have an EQ block, and basically what I'm doing here is kind of, I'm trying to emphasize the mid-range of this tone. Um, Keith's tone is definitely kind of mid-range centric type of thing, so I am boosting 1.9 dB at 395 hertz. That's what I'm doing with this EQ block. It's, a, it's the simple EQ block. 
So after the simple EQ block, I have a reverb block. It is a, uh, a room reverb. It's in the legacy folder. Um, and basically, I like to throw a room reverb on. Um, if you guys um, are familiar with John Simons of Sonic Drive Studio, um, he, uh, he has some really great um, kind of tone videos using both the Helix and Axe FX stuff. And he also likes, um, I kind of learned from him, he likes to put a room reverb block at the end of his chain to kind of give it that real feel, like it's in a real studio. And when I applied his technique, it did kind of bring some of my tones to life. So now I don't make a tone without some sort of room reverb on it. Now, I don't think these are all defaulted. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to go through the settings. So like I said, it's a room reverb. Um... The decay is at 3.1. Pre-delay is 11 milliseconds. Low cut is at 117 hertz. High cut is at 3.7K. The mix is at 17%. The level is at zero. And I don't have the trails on. I'm not going between patches, so I just left them off. That's pretty much it for this patch. Pretty typical for some of my patches, if you've seen any of my videos. Now in the mix, you always gotta do a little bit of mixing. I tried to not do too much post-processing. Um, I wanted to get this one as close as I could. I did end up doing a little bit. I have a Pro EQ. Now if you're wondering what all this is, so basically I have each chunk of riff divided up into folders. That's just how I do it. You go from this riff this riff and the next riff I, I just I've always kind of divided up my, my my tracks like that the point I'm trying to make is I have everything in folder tracks and on that folder I'll EQ it so for all intents and purposes these are all EQ the same way they're grouped put a pro EQ on it and what I'm doing is I'm boosting a little bit of uh, kind of mid upper mid range looks like at uh, 1130 Hertz so let's see what that sounds like I'll solo <laughs> So, and then what I'm doing is I'm kind of taking out some whistly tones and you'll, you will definitely notice that, um, with higher gain tones, you get a lot of whistly frequencies. Um, and I don't know if it's because of these, um, bare dynamics headphones, but I really notice them. I know these headphones do tend to have a little bit of a frequency spike in this upper range. So I might hear it more than other people would listening on their headphones, but I'll play it and get rid of the EQ and you can I think you'll definitely be able to tell if you're listening on something decent uh, no, I'll solo those frequencies it's gonna suck And that's it. I tried, like I said, I tried to, I tried to keep it simple. Try to get it good at the source. Um, so, like I said, that little bit of a upper mid range boost at eleven thirty, and then I'm notching at thirty four seventy seven, pretty substantially. Looks like about negative nine dB, and then I'm notching at ninety five oh nine. Same thing. Looks about nine dB, and that's it. That's all I did. Um, on my mix bus. I'm just compressing with a slate gray compressor. It's really not doing too much. It's kind of bringing the drums down in the mix. It's squashing them a little, kind of 
melding it all together and then I just have a limiter so I don't have any post EQ on this one and that's it guys not much to this one uh, it was pretty fun coming up with these little riffs um, thanks for the suggestion I'm sorry I forget the name of the person who suggested this uh, it was a great idea I, uh, I came home and was pretty inspired and wrote a couple of these quick little riffs and they who knows they might end up in a song or sometime down the road thanks so much for everybody who subscribed um, um, thanks for the comments and the likes uh, it's been fun uh, sorry for the little bit of the absence I just got busy doing some other stuff um, I've been working on a project with one of my good friend Jeff Plua Pluva um, it's called the partisan component um, and basically we've just been writing some heavy metal and putting out singles I'll put the links for all that stuff in the description if you guys have any more ideas for some tones drop them in the comments don't forget to subscribe all that all that BS you know what to do thanks a lot guys I'll see you in the next one